The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everybody. Bom dia, as they say in Brazil, or buenos dias. My name's Tim, Contours Travel. Today's little webinar, a slight presentation, as I like to call it, is going to be in Brazil, or about Brazil, in the areas called the Pantanal, the Amazon Basin, or an area, and Bonito, which is this um, beautiful river system, which is like an open aquarium. So, um, oh, it's moving. Right. So just recently, I've actually got back this weekend, and we had a, a beautiful three-week trip in the south uh, to Brazil. I've been to Manaus, to Belém, uh, Recife, Salvador, uh, Rio, Bujos, Paraty. I'm not showing off, but this has taken about 20 trips, of course, in the Iguazu Falls. This is the first time I've visited this particular area. Very excited about it because of the biodiversity in this um, particular um, corner of Brazil is just amazing, and uh, especially for wildlife and bird watchers. So if you've got any clients who love bird watching, this has to be the place. In this area here, the distance between, so we're going to talk about the Amazon and the, um, uh, the lodge here, um, all the way down to Bonito, um, something like 400 or 500 kilometers but you get a lot of overland travel, your clients can see a, an amazing biodiversity uh, that I've not seen before. So we'll start off in the, um, the Amazon region there. The, we fly in and out of Cuyaba. We'll be talking about the Chapadas or the flat top mountains here, and we'll finish up in the Pantanal, the north, and also the south. Uh, the entry points of Cuyaba for the north, Campo Grande for the south, and the river system of Bonito in this particular area here. Um, the whole area is just, just amazing. So to fly, uh, to get to Cristalino Lodge, you have to fly into a town called um, Alto Foresta. Actually, look up the three-letter code and be a secondary prize for this. Um, you'd be surprised by the three-letter code here. Then it's an hour by the overland um, car and a half an hour by boat to get into the lodge itself. So you're now in this beautiful, pristine area of the Amazon in Brazil. And it's a normal, yeah, it's a very beautiful lodge, and it's a little bit better fitted out by the, some of the thing, uh, ones we sell in Peru, um, Ecuador, and Bolivia. But the same things happen. The, the, the guides are all experts of flora and fauna people, and they take you out, or your clients out, for bird watching, um, mammal spot, uh, spotting, uh, canoe rides, uh, towers, three meals are included in a day, and it's worth at least three nights in this particular area. So that's, I'll show you on the map where that happens, so a tower if you like, very comfortable, very, uh, in, but it's a unique part corner of, of the Amazon, uh, less populated, unlike um, some of the other places in Ecuador and Peru, and Manaus on the mighty Amazon River uh, has got something like two million people. So very in a particular corner of, of the Amazon uh, area. Um, so that's so we just that's that area just here. So into Cuyaba, a flight to Alta, and then an hour and a half to get into the Amazon Lodge. This is all in the state of Mato Grosso, and all this area. So right now, if I just stop, so we we can we. This is the Amazon here, right on this particular lodge also, you can travel overland about two and a half hours and it's on the edge of the Amazon, the Savannah or um, Cerrado area, and this is the Pantanal area. The Pantanal is a floodplain that's fed from rivers by the high plains in this particular area. So five or six or seven nights, probably more to give your clients so comfortable, as I said, the, the biodiversity is just an amazing place. So if they haven't got time to fly all the way up here, we can and drive them into this particular corner of, and so you get the two different biodiversity areas within the, this the short range of distance. Uh, the Amazon, the, the forest is slightly different to, um, the, the, because of it's being on the edge. Same sort of thing applies. Um, Day walks, day canoe rides, horse rides, um, activities, great guides, and comfortable lodgings to come back into and, and relax. 
So the, 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 the forest, again, is um, slightly different, but the, you get the same sort of feeling. So the Amazon forest, you, you hear and see that, uh, don't see as much perhaps and so, because it's all closed in, but they, they will take you out and then spot and hear and uh, listen to the, the noise of the jungle during the day and during the night. Uh, again, I keep saying about the bird watchers and, and the, the diversity of the area is just sensational. Um, so what we've just done now, we've got to run, so that was Cuyaba, that last lodge was just in this particular area here, and for the first time I visited an area called Chapada Guimaras. And Chapada are a flat top mountains, um, uh, and escarpments if you like, in a couple of pictures I'll show you in a minute. So. That's about an hour away from Cuyaba, an hour and a half, and there's a national park in there. And we stayed at this park eco lodge, and we did day walks and um, uh, treks, and they took us out in the different entry points of um, of this particular place. So, um, and these are the Chapadas, flat top mountains. There's three major areas of national parks of this particular formations. We are going to visit. We're visiting this one here. The other ones in the state here, and uh, the one that in Martinez just outside Salvador. So people who love outdoor um, walking and trekking, and um, just the, the, the flat top mountains, ravines, caves, streams, waterfalls, uh, a haven for walkers and natural um, outdoor bush sort of setting, if you like. And the historical geological formations, evidently these areas were underwater millions and millions of years ago. Uh, so great scenery and uh, great diversity through this particular area, but you need to be an outdoor sort of person. Yeah, just to give you an idea, the flat top mountains around, the most famous one is of course in Venezuela, Venezuela, and that's Angel Falls. That comes from the Angel Falls, uh, the water drop there is the highest one in the world, and that originates from a flat top mountain next door. So that's where, in Brazil, they call them um, flat tops. Uh, Chapadas, beg your pardon. So we went out for, um, oh, go back, oh, sorry. Yep. Um, great scenery and walks, as I said, waterfalls, um, pools, uh, rivers, animals, lots and lots of bird life, including the um, ground owl. Um, one night we're sitting in the lodge and this great big bloody tarantula walks up into the, uh, into the open area. It's in the, uh, the, uh, the eating area was a, an open area. So that was a little bit scary, made us move a little bit. Uh, but beautiful scenery, great wildlife, and an excellent guide. Uh, so the other thing that I found that the first time ever is that there's a central point right in the middle of Brazil, and left or right, if you like, was 1,600 kilometers to the Atlantic Ocean and 1,600 kilometers to the Pacific Ocean on the other side. So, uh, and it was marked by this funny little thing, um, unlike the um, equator monument that we have in Ecuador, just outside Quito, and the Brazilians just put a little um, a rock in the wall, uh, in, the, in the floor. But great viewpoints, and that's the whole area that we uh, went around and looked at. Beautiful um, eight-room lodge, very comfortable, and as I said, uh, walks, rivers, um, bathing in the waterfalls, because to get to these particular areas, it's a hard work, very hot in particular, and then you can cool off in those beautiful, clean pools and then continue on your trekking. So good sightseeing, good food, good accommodation, great guides, English spoken everywhere. So the park lodge is in a private property next door to the national park, and from there, and uh, we did these particular walks and came back and enjoyed the swimming pool and the um, bird life near, nearby also. And the, 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 um, they also got their own little trek, so if you feel a little bit more energetic, you can go for another walk. So we've done the Amazon up here. We had to look at this uh, area, that this verge, a very uh, unique area, the Chapala, the flat top mountains in this particular thing. Now we're going to uh, travel, we travelled overland, that takes about an hour, and then an hour and a half, two hours, and we drive into the Pantanal. The Pantanal is uh, the world's biggest wetland area, covers approximately 150,000 acres of, um, of the area. It's just a sensational place. 
and it's actually a um, when, when the uh, Portuguese actually arrived, they thought it was an inland um, an inland sea, and they didn't realise what it, they call it. And those very two hundred years ago, an inland sea, but then they realised it was just a yeah, the water receded and that uh, came um, and the land appeared, sort of thing. And they um, they they actually called it Al Pantanal, and it actually means the swamp. But but imagine so it covers parts of Bolivia and Paraguay. Um, so again, the, the diversity here is just sensational. The, there's something like um, 700 bird species. Um, what do they have? Um, 80, 80 mammals, 260 uh, fish species, and 50 reptiles. So the place to sort of get lost in for your outdoor activities. This is the area. So Cuyaba and all. All the, um, the accommodation, whether it's in the north or in the south, you're actually staying on working ranches and you explore the land of the working ranch. So we, we stayed at the Araras Lodge, which is just around here. The Jaguar area we're going to look at is, is in this particular thing. It's a bit difficult to get to and the house, there's a houseboat in, th in this particular spot here. A Campo Grande brings us into this particular area. Um, so this is the, the entry overland and the Pantanaya and the, some of the best times to, to go into this area are, well, I'm not going to dwell on this because of the, um, the seasonality but the uh, summer is that's when the rains came we were just uh, we got a little bit of rain last week when we were there uh, and the, the, the plains the dry they flood in this particular area it's very hot the lodge actually closes down for about five or four weeks in December and opens in January so then uh, in um, the autumn spectacular scenery rainy season ends um, winter think far north Queensland the best time to visit South America I think is when us Victorians travel up to far north Queensland. So that applies to this particular time also, and spring and the, um, the, the rain start coming back again. So um, daily walks, canoe rides, again, bird watching, bird watching, and bird watching. It's a paradise um, through there. Horse riding, relaxing, came and all over the place, nice little lodges, and they're working horse um, cattle ranches. Um, wherever you stay, they, they, they are fazendas and, they, and accommodations in that particular area. So we stayed at this particular area here, 22,000 acres, 19 rooms, uh, very comfortable, lots of uh, welcome air condition during the day because the, the, the days got very hot and they don't do anything during the midday. We get early morning walks, late evening afternoon walks or a, um, a rides into the evening. Uh, we, they take us out by truck and uh, spotting. Uh, wildlife and animals, and I went on a horse ride one afternoon, and um, then we stepped on that horse, and we stepped on the little came, and they're just walk, walking through the pond. But that seemed to be the natural thing to do. Um, at the other end, the Cayman Lodge, um, a, a bigger area, bigger acreage, and they've got three or four lodges made up of sort of several rooms. And again, the same sort of thing happens: daily walks, canoe rides, um, a much bigger area, as you can see, 53,000 acres. And the most famous sort of bird in this area is the Hainston um, macaw. That's the blue macaw with the yellow ring um, eyes. Just a beautiful animal. Um, wildlife all over the place. Different seasons, different times, so we need to be aware of uh, what's available. So spotting the jaguar, the best place is in this particular corner here, or the jaguar houseboat. Just see that uh, corner thing just through there. So the lodge there, down the bottom was the Canela Lodge, and right in the middle here is the best spot. Because there's less activity or less um, uh, ranches and it's harder to get into. So you're on the houseboat and one of the ladies here was there in August, um, uh, Leticia, and she actually did spot a, a, a jaguar. Uh, and there's the blue um, hyson macaw. So we're now finishing up with our um, the area. So uh, now we made you know, every spot that we stopped, I could probably talk for 15 minutes because there's so much to do and see. So we covered from the Amazon, Japada, the National Park, the Pantanal, 
and for something very different, this, this area here is called Bonito or small town and it's got a river system where you can just float and snorkel in this particular area all day long in um, caves uh, with river systems in them and just a nice relaxing place and you're swimming in an open natural environment or a big open um, aquarium if you like. A um, little bit difficult to get to because um, it's about a uh, four, uh, three and a half, four hour drive overland by public transport. Iguazu Falls is down the bottom here in this particular area. So we just covered this amazing area in 10 minutes, but the, uh, if you've got people who love nature, who love bird watching, the whole lot, uh, you can do all that in, I'd say, three nights minimum, three nights and three nights and they would cover, and I'm sure they'd be uh, forever grateful because uh, to seize part, you know, to get something like 600 species in the one area, the possibility of sporting 100 birds on a trip, I think they'd be very, very excited. Uh, special interest tours, a little bit of hard work, but really were well worth the effort to, to visit this particular and to fly out to these particular areas and do all this. Um, just to some of the lodges in that Bonito area, Comfortable, relaxing, um, not so much for outdoor activity. Well, it's swimming, snorkeling, let's say, but the, uh, the bird life is back further up in the, uh, uh, the Pantanal and up in the, um, the Chapada area. Um, so, let's see. Okay, so question. What was my question? Um, well, what animal in the Pantanal area is famous for? So that, if you answer that, you get into the draw to go on a female to Ecuador in March or April. We just got to um, um, lock down the flights and the, cab the cabins on for the Galapagos Islands. Um, so please, if you've got any questions or any queries on any part of South America, give, give us a call because um, we, we we've we been doing this since about 40 40 odd years ago when I first traveled there in 1975. Mexico, Central America, South America, 13 countries, 7 countries, Mexico, so 21 countries of Latin America, Cuba, and we do a couple of the Caribbean things. And we also sell um, Antarctica cruises. So what you just did was a little armchair ride in this little corner of Brazil. and. Um, took us to, to the four hours to fly from Rio to this particular area. Australia fits into Brazil just to give you an idea of shape and size. Any question on any area, special interest, please give uh, the staff a call or myself and we'd love to help you out. You find out what the client wants and wish, I'm very sure that we'll probably find what they would like to do and show them how to do it um, and how to get lost in the back of um, Brazil. So uh, thank you very much for joining us. Um, let your friends and other know that we uh, record this and you can have a look at this anytime at all. Thank you. Have a great weekend.